Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. Green Bay fish here. We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. Specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. <laughs> this is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors, and today we're on Green Bay. We're going to be fishing with Paul Delaney, and I think we're going to call today's show the Back to Reality episode. Last week we were down in Kansas catching huge white crappies, 45 degree weather. It was a wonderful break from what's been a very, very cold winter. Today we're up here in Green Bay, up near Egg Harbor actually, and temperatures five below zero, wind chills down there right around a nice balmy 20 degrees below zero, but that's not going to get in the way of us catching a lot of fish today. Uh, we're going to be out here on Green Bay. I got a call from Paul. He said the white fish are on, they're banging, and they're running big this year. So we're going to get out on some reefs that run north and south along the peninsula up here near Door County and we're going to see if we can't get on a large school of whitefish because Paul's telling us if we do we're going to catch fish from start to finish. So before the sun gets any higher we're going to get the snowmobiles off the trailer, hook up the otters and head out to the reefs. This is the general area where we're supposed to meet Paul. He's out running houses in the area, of course. Paul guides up here for whitefish, runs permanent houses out here on the lake. And he kind of told us uh, this is the general spot where we'd uh, meet him. And of course, uh, he'll get here when, he's, when he gets here. Cold and icy. It's not nicey. Here comes the old man. I hope I'm in the right spot. It certainly looks like the right spot to me. It's good to see <laughs> you. Good, you betcha, yeah. How was the morning? You good. Get set? Yeah, no, we got her all set. Uh, it's cold, but it's nice out here today. I think uh, get Beats in the run. otter and get them going. Yeah, let's all give right. them a shot. You good got to see it. you. You got to mark them? Sure do. Oh, sounds good. Oh, yeah. You know, last year we did this, we fished in separate shacks, but uh, I caught baloney on this. This is more fun. This is. No, it really is. We're still working down there. James are just tight to the bottom there, though. I can see him flicker once in a while. There he is. I got him. There he is. You dog. <laughs> you always got to be the first guy to the buffet table, don't you? Well, it's just the way it went this time. I'll reel up. Get out of your way just in case. But you know that current here, that current's pushing out of the south here this morning, so we don't have direct contact with that bait right below the ice here. So. You, know, you got a bow in your line, you just got to kind of keep working that so you've got tension there and you don't feel those bites when that bait's on the bottom there. It just all of a sudden there's just a little bit of pressure there. I always say hook sets are free. Set the hook. Um, uh, this flatlander from Minnesota is not used to fishing in 60 foot of water. I mean, we do it with lake trout and some, you know, different stream trout species and lakes, but for the most part, this is twice as deep as I've ever fished. So I kind of feel like I'm about ready to fall off the edge of the, you know, the, the earth here. And then when you add current into it, mm -hmm. it's a whole different, different ball game. Looks like a pretty decent fish, huh? Yeah, he's fighting pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull the transducer out What's here. the biggest white fish you've ever caught out here? Uh, 26 inches. We got that one last year. Yeah, it was 26 really? inches, but very girthy. I would guess the fish solid, you know, a heavy five, maybe six pounds. Okay. We had one here uh, the other day that was 24, which was a really nice fish. Here he comes. Here we go. Oh, that's dandy. Oh, he's bent up like a horseshoe down there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Not a real giant fish, but a nice fish. 
Well, we, now we were here last year and we didn't get any fish that big. Yeah, you know, we, um, and I kind of was saying that too last year, there's a big difference between these fish that are offshore and the fish that are inshore. Sure. A lot of times the fish that are inshore are a lot smaller, um, but you know, we're out here, like I said, 60 feet, we got 80 feet just outside the shack here. Generally, we see a lot bigger, bigger fish, bigger masses of fish out here too. That's why you wanted us to come back. And here we are. See what yeah. it was all about. I see you've been picking up some uh, fish handling tips from Joel Nelson. That's you, okay, you yeah, that they tonight. wash out, yeah. <laughs> Honda power and reliability have been combined with StrikeMaster's legendary ice cutting technology to produce the 35cc Honda Light. Powered by a powerful and efficient engine, the 35cc Honda Light offers first pull reliability and weighs in at a feather light 23 pounds when equipped with an 8 inch laser auger. This winter, pick up a Honda 35cc Light from StrikeMaster, the most reliable and fastest cutting four stroke auger on the ice. Got him. Hey, all right. Okay, this is a bigger fish. I don't know what I tied into here, but this feels completely different than that small he ran white some fish line I saw. Right away, yeah. He did. This fish just stopped me cold. Yeah, that's a better fish. <laughs> okay, I, I, I get it. I yeah. see what this whole white fish thing's all about. Yeah, this is a white fish. This is cool. Hey, we'll take it. And like I said, in the deep water, it's just a blast to reel them up. This is awesome. Yeah, he's not bigger than mine. <laughs> I think the, the biggest white fish I caught last year was maybe 17, 18 inches. Yeah. yeah. I got to get my transducer out of the way of this. Yeah, I can pull that. Let me just take a peek here. If this is not a great big one and they get bigger, I'll take this all day long and twice on Sunday. <laughs> here he comes. Well, he's not a bad fish. Last couple feet. Hey, buddy. That was a crazy cool fight for a fish that 18 inches? I'm going to get some 18 inches, yeah. Yeah, 17, 18 inches right there, yeah. That's been about average. We are getting smaller ones, and we're getting bigger ones, but our average fish has been about that size. I'm feeling a little sheepish right now. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of had my uh, my hinder handed to me by a ah. average whitefish. Rocket ship. You know, now I do have to keep some of these fish. Uh, Calvin Schwiel, the guy I fished with last week down in Kansas, caught all those big crappies. Guy goes on to Kansas, catches huge crappies, doesn't keep a one. He finds out I'm coming out here to yeah. Lake Michigan, Green Bay to, to fish whitefish. He said, we can't be friends bring, anymore. Bring, I don't bring him home any whitefish. Bring fish. me a bag of whitefish, that's right. Hey, can't blame them, they're such a great table fare. He I mean. says they're better than crappies, bluegills, walleyes. I mean, I, I've not tried them, I've got to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I do hear they are delicious, so I have to bring home at least three, four of them for them. They are a great eating fish, and you know, there's a, many different ways you can prepare them. Um, so not only are these fish fun to catch, but very rewarding at the dinner table too. All right, well, that was spirited. I want one. <laughs> there we oh, go. Look at them things just go bonkers. That's my bait there. They're just so, they're just quick hitters. Yeah. I mean, they just come peck. up and they, yep, they root down on it. And you won't feel the bite unless it's falling. There Got it. it. Right. Well, they will come back and hit it again, apparently. That's going to be 17 inch fish. See, now, back home in Minnesota, people confuse the whitefish and the tulipy. Tulipy are not such good to eat in fish. You can smoke them. Yeah. I mean, there's some, 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 some things you can do with them. But if you've ever tried to like fry a tulipy, you've been disappointed. Big difference, yeah. Well, the whitefish is a very, very good eating fish. Look at this. Yeah. Not a bad fish. No. I'm gonna guess fish maybe 60. You little devil. Uh, but still a nice fish. I mean, a fun fish to catch. And if you're gonna keep them for table fare, it's still a decent fish for cleaning up. These things are almost impossible to hold. They they're are. little fish missiles. They really are. There's really nothing to hold on them and there's slime on them. But they're a blast to catch. They really are. Well, back you go, buddy. I haven't decided on which fish I'm going to keep yet. I'd go go bigger fish. Yeah, wait, go, for, go wait big, for your bigger Go big fish. to go home? Eight, 18 inches are better, yeah. All right, fair enough. Later, buddy. Here we go. I'm getting good at this. I'm going to try to get better. <laughs> I'm going down. So when you're fishing a uh, one-eighth ounce um, chicken wrap, do you think the spring bobber helps quite a bit? No, not, not, not at all. <laughs> But here's where it does help. Some of those guys are like, am I on bottom, am I on bottom, am I on bottom? So you can see where it neutralizes. Sure. I just wouldn't be me if I didn't tease. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, that, boy, I that I felt, was, did you see it? No, but I saw you respond to it. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. He's got the rod bound. Okay, folks, this is legit. I mean, we just got back from Kansas last week, caught all those big crappies. Uh, they were great fish, but they didn't fight like this, that's for sure. Well, I mean, anybody ever says around me that whitefish don't fight, uh, they're going to get the uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh no, from this no. guy. Yeah. I don't want to diss on my favorite, you know, the walleye, but I mean, 
inch for inch, these things will school a walleye as far as fight. Yeah. One, one of the interesting things about these fish is they're, they're a species that has the ability to come out of deep water, vent the gases that build up in their air bladder, and then return without any damage, yeah. without any harm. Yeah. If you caught walleyes out of 60 foot of water like we are right now, of course, all those fish would need to be kept. These white fish, they survive, they deal with this exceptionally well, kind of like a lake trout. They release very well, you know, so if, if, it's, if it's a, you know, you get your limit and you want to catch some fish for the rest of the day and release them, no problem. They release very well. Well, you guys just saw what that fish I mean, you would call that just an average fish here, correct? That's been our average fish here offshore where we're fishing here today, yeah. All right, sweetheart. And that, what you hear there, that, that burp, that's that fish venting its, uh, its air bladder out through its mouth. So it would normally happen to a regular fish that doesn't have that ability. Those gases would build up, cause internal damage. Here in a white fish, also gives a burp. Just like a lake trout. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So they release very well. Remember, I'm selling these 10 bucks, I know, just, 10 bucks yeah, a piece. I'm, just, I'm all over it. I'm just still giving it some time. You want a stubborn Norwegian. <laughs> Not that there's any other kind. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way, because I happen to be Norwegian myself. <laughs> The new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter feature a new look and unmatched protection from the elements. The fully insulated Pro XT 1200 features a 1200 denier shell built for extreme conditions, while the Thermal Top XT 650 features a 650 denier shell that locks in heat and eliminates condensation. All Extreme Thermal Shelters are built on Otter's legendary roto molded sled and proven oversized square tube frames. The all new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter, built tougher, stronger, smarter. There we go. Now keep him hooked up. Grease him. I'm gonna try. He's a better one. That's a better fish. It's finally my turn. Better fish. All right, that's my cue. That's I'll get out of the way. Fish. I'm gonna go 18 on this one. Here it comes. Oh, there we go. All right. That is a bigger fish. Here we go. Well, that one's on the shad there. Yep, got him there. Yeah. A little bit better than those last couple fish we've had there. I'm gonna guess a fish maybe 17, but a nice chubby one, you know, nice healthy fish. And it's been about average here today. You know, we've been averaging fish 16 to 18 inches with, with a lot of nice fish, bigger than that, but this has been about our average fish here. Real fun to catch. So now you gotta tell us about the jig and shads and the jig and wraps. Sure. Why do you choose those Sure, baits? sure, let me just put this fish back here. Yeah, primarily what these fish are feeding down there are gobies. So, you know, I'm using the little number two jigging shad wrap. I know you've got the number three jigging wrap on there. And really what we're doing, if you notice, I've taken the treble hook off on the bottom there. And there's a reason that I've done that. These fish down here are rooting around in the rocks and those gobies live in the rocks. It's very important that our presentation is on the bottom. And really a key thing with these baits is that we're not really pulling these baits up in the water because these gobies are scattering around in the bottom. They're shooting around in the bottom. So these baits here will shoot. When you give them a little jig, they'll shoot forward, they'll dart forward. And if you notice where I have my knot tied on there, I kind of always push it towards the front. So when that bait does get pushed, it jumps forward. So it's imitating what those gobies look like down there. So, so color is key, but shape and profile really is. And darker colors, browns, sure. blacks, sure. golds. Yeah, black and golds. This happens to be a crawdad color. The yellow perch has been really well for us. Um, so we're really not using our chartreuses, our fire tigers, more your natural colors. Oh, there we go. Aha! <laughs> you know, just a few short days ago, I was out uh, prancing around in 40 degree weather, but if I gotta be on an ice house, this is the action it takes to keep me occupied. We saw 33 the other day, I thought that was a heat wave. But you know, you can tell when I'm coming to an area to fish, the, the barometer and the temperature. Yeah, tanks. yeah. Tanks. Yeah, call me cold front. Call me cold front. This feels like a better fish, yeah. but. I'm gonna say right there, same thing. 16, 17 inches. I'm gonna measure one of these. All right. You know, you're one of the very few fishing guides that I've ever met that actually underestimates the size of fish. Let's go 17. <laughs> it's a larger of the two, right? <laughs> but no, we, we that you know that's been our average size there, which is a which is a good quality fish. It's not sure. a giant, but it's just it's a good quality fish. No complaints from this guy. Yeah. Let me pop that transducer out of there. There's that. Oh yeah, nicer fish. There he Slide is. Slide him up here on the ice. I've learned to not uh, try to grab him from out of the water because there's no way to get a hold of them. Yeah, and you get all wet. They just get you all wet. Slide them right out and they behave well, then you can get them unhooked. And this is my kind of water. fishing, man. No live bait, no fuss, no muss. No, it's real simple, very effective. That's a nice fish. Now, I, I think I got some bad news for this one. I think this is going to be part of the, uh, the fish that I owe Cal 
for continuing our friendship. Sure, sure. No, he's a good fish. You get, yeah. uh, you know, you get half a dozen fish like that or a little bit bigger. You got a couple good meals. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to put him down here in the corner next to me and that one's going home with me. There we go. There's some nice things about fishing in the shack with you. The conversation's enjoyable, but you do cut into my fishing time a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, it goes both ways here. <laughs> Whoever's catching more, the other guy loses more. You know, the whole deal here is when one guy catches a fish, hooks up, we're in such a deep water that the other guy has to reel up, at least for part of the fight, make sure that fish doesn't hook that line. Yeah, they don't so hurry up. It. They don't allow the right. Yeah, they don't allow to do it, but hey, there's a nice one. Here we go. Atta boy. Atta boy. There we go. There you go. Yeah, he's got a little bit more. More schmunk. Meat on him, yeah. Get that jigging oh. ramp out of there. Yeah. Of course, he's just a little bit longer than the one you just kept there and just a little bit fatter. Of course. Of course, it's got to go that way, yeah. No, but just another great, great fish and just a whole lot of these down there and uh, just a great, great way to spend the winter out here ice fishing for these guys. I'm going to guess, James, I'm going to go 18 inches on this one, but this is a great size here to keep. Um, you know, you don't really want to keep those small ones. They get a little bit tough to clean. Sure. Uh, put, the, put the smaller ones back, keep your bigger fish like this, just a lot easier to clean, a lot more meat to, to eat there. See, I still think you're shorting these fish. I'm going 18. Put it on I'm there. I'm going 18. I'm going to go 18. Nose to the board. 20, almost 21 inches long. <laughs> no, nice fish. Add that one to your pile of fish going sure. on. Sure. Well, yeah. Cal's your buddy too. Yeah. I'll oh, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Cal he said hi. There we go. But yeah, those are those are the size fish that you want to keep. With a lot of smaller fish in the system, there, um, you know, let those fish go. Those bigger fish are just a lot easier to clean. A lot more meat on them, and um, let the small ones grow for next year. And again, you're one of the very few fishermen, fishing guides I've ever met that actually shorts the fish when you eyeball them. It's kind of nice. I don't measure them. I guess I'm just. You weren't even close. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better to be wrong that way, right? Right, right. All Nobody right. can ever accuse you All of right. big eyeing them. That's right. My advice to guys that are going to come fishing with them, bring a ruler. <laughs> Not a big bag. <laughs> Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide, and every thread wrap in between. It's these components, along with an attention to detail, that makes our customized rods a tuned up custom. You know, some of the things we're noticing here and that we're only able to tell because we're using the underwater cameras is in the difference between the way these whitefish feed and the way most fish feed in the bodies of water that I normally fish. Instead of coming up on lures, these whitefish are so predisposed to pinning baits down that even when you get a whitefish to come up in the water column, they'll come up two, three feet sometimes, they'll actually try to get above the bait, and you can see it in the underwater video on these Markhams, they're still coming down on the bait. So anytime you see a fish come in on your camera or on your Markham, get that bait down on the bottom, and then just give it little tiny twitches, two, three inch twitches, that fish might circle around a few times, but give him enough time, he's gonna slam in there, grab that bait, and you're gonna have another white fish hookup. Jeez. Yes. What's the most white fish you've caught in a day? You ever caught oh, one of them? Oh, well, it depends on how many people we've got out here, you know, I mean, if you're talking about an individual catch, one guy on a really good day, if you spend it, you know, you could, one guy can easily catch 50 fish. Well, we're kind of in that time period now. Oh boy, just blue bubbles everywhere. Yeah, that's a, know, that's a great way to illustrate what we're talking about, that these fish can vent their air bubbles. And that thing just curtained. Oh, a huge nice. spray of them. Come on up, sweetheart. Here we go. Here we go. Another good one. Yeah. I think this one gets to go meet Cal too. Sure, that's a, that's a great specimen to go home. Yeah. They're just so muscular too. All right, buddy. Over here in the pile. I'm fishing a... Uh, a precision from tuned up custom rods and I've got braided line as my main line on here. It's a six pound diameter braid and because the water's so clear uh, I've tied in a fluorocarbon leader. This is four pound fluorocarbon. I went with about six foot of leader. It seems like a lot but I tell you what even though these braided lines at six pound test are really thin 
they really stand out in this gin clear water so I thought it was a pretty good idea to put that longer leader on there I know Paul you pretty much go straight monofilament uh, most of the time don't you yeah I mean I've got them rigged up both different ways um, we have uh, some of them with the with the braid on here some with the mono um, but I use a lot of the monos just simply because you know if you're not used to fishing braided lines sometimes people are pulling fish off and ripping hooks out of there so the monofilament has a little bit more stretch factor there to keep the fish on there but but both are effective you just need to fish the the braid a little bit differently and I think this this precision is just about perfect for getting that bait to just pop without getting sure. a, you know a long ways off the bottom uh, I know you run a guide business you stay very busy during the winter um, love for people to give you a call so you can take them out here and show them the you know the, the whole program but what advice would you give for somebody that wanted to come out here and try it just by themselves as long as there's good safe ice you know get some intel and make sure that the ice conditions are safe enough to travel offshore whether you're traveling snowmobiles or four-wheelers if you can have some good navigation equipment that has chips in it where you can see these offshore structures these offshore um, contour lines and stuff like that most of our activity is anywhere from 40 to in some cases 70 feet of water bottom contact really is very important Bonk. as you can see there's another fish um, as long as you've got good good safe ice conditions i'd totally recommend looking to your offshore reefs and your offshore structure gotcha yep and on the west side way. because that's the closest I like the side to the deepest of the water. stuff because on, on all the stuff out here the deep water is on along the west side yeah these guys are a blast man i like it <laughs> look at here's the fish <laughs> he's come flying right up out of the hole <laughs> That's the way to end it, Paul, right there. Yes, another nice, great fish. Beautiful. Where are you at, sweetheart? Oh, hooked that way. All right. White fish handshake. Hey, <laughs> thanks for cooperating, fish. One of many today. There he goes. Well, we're at the part of the day where I no longer feel the driving need to catch another whitefish. <laughs> you know, uh, today from about the moment we put lines in the water till we just decided that that was enough, uh, we've had fish after fish. And that's a pretty rare experience. So for anybody that finds themselves in the just need to catch a bunch of great hard fighting fish midwinter, you need to look this guy up. When he called me, he said the whitefish are on, they're running great size, you gotta come, you'll have a blast. It's just a ton of fun. 100% correct. Um, you know, there's a lot of different species all across the ice belt. And uh, this is one that when you're fishing in Wisconsin, it seems like it's almost the preferred fish to catch. I mean, it's so popular here and absolutely underutilized elsewhere across the, the ice belt. It's been a great new fishery for us. You know, it's relatively new. This started on the sport fishing end of things back in about 07. And we've just had banner years ever since. Every year we've just produced great numbers of quality fish out here. And it's just one of those fish where you can go and cash in on great size fish, numbers of fish throughout the entire ice fishing season. So whether it's January, February, or March, this fishery's here and it's waiting for everybody to come and enjoy. You know, for anybody that's interested in getting out and checking out these white fish, we shared lots of tips today. Uh, for those adventurous types, you should be able to come out. You know, be careful of the ice, but if you'd prefer to, you know, share the ice with somebody like Paul, make sure you look him up. He's great to fish with. I always have a blast when I come out here fishing with Paul. Uh, the website, of course, is uh, uh, lateisportfishing.com. He'll do you right, put you on a bunch of great fish. And as always, every time I come out here to fish with you in the winter, uh, we do two things. We catch a lot of fish, and I drag a nasty cold front with us. So I apologize for that. I wish I could return the hospitality. Uh, what fish cooperated, we were able to put it together and enjoy the time on the ice. And Come on up here to Door County. There's a lot of whitefish waiting for you. All right, from Paul and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.